What's going on, guys? Welcome back, Trading Desk. Stay tuned. I think we got a fun one tonight. Oh, yeah. Guys, Trading Desk, Thursday night. Thank you for logging back in, following with us. Got my special co-star, co-guest, Sequan here. Tommy. me. Good CQ show. The watch guy back again. Today, we are going to take a pretty lighthearted attempt at uh, the future of Watchbox media content. We got some big news. We got some stuff in the works. Uh, so we're going to kind of touch on that a little bit. We got some watch stuff, too, so don't go away. But uh, we to do uh, wrist shots. You want to roll into uh, we what's do wrist going shots on first. I'm excited right. about this wrist shot go today. Let's go. Today, for you, I have the Carl F. Booker. Boom, there you go. I got that blue. Carl F. Booker, Petravi, Travel Tech, GMT. Uh, I love Carl F. Booker, one, because not many people know too much about them, but they make awesome, awesome watches, great value. This watch is a chronograph. It's a triple GMT. You got your <clears throat> you got your outer ring. Inner ring goes both ways. You go east and west with this little um, trigger right here. You can even see right there, little window that shows you the action. And it just looks beautiful. And for a wrist like mine, fits perfect. Really beautiful bracelet as well. And this is a watch you don't see every day, but I, I love a lot. Comes in a couple different versions with the blue dial. Sweet. Yeah, uh, you can steal that thing too. Cause... Oh yeah, value-wise, it's like insane. I think retail is probably like over 10 for sure. And this is definitely under six. So I it's say. Uh, got a little Grubel slash Omega Hour Vision, Sapphire's little side window. Giant watch. Yes. I mean, big big boy watch. Mm, I just are good. you left handed? I, I just I go back and forth. I, I was okay. I was born I was right handed just, and then in, in I saw the watch school, on so the so. screen right side up and I'm like, what's going on here? So I did have a client who uh texted me yesterday and he's like, Has anybody ever taught you how to wear a watch? Has to be on the left hand with the, the crown point is like, you know, you could wear your watch however you want to wear it. I switch. Okay. I well, listen, I go back and forth. Whatever all day. you want, I just it was an observation. I'm, all right. I'm Calm sorry. down. I'm sorry. All right. I'm so excited. Anyhow. Let's uh let's get a good watch on the screen. Ooh, no, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Bulgari Octo Finissimo, uh, you guys know I love this watch. This one here so is sweet. one of two hundred limited edition with that blue. And I'm really happy with the lighting right now. You can see that blue popping hopefully. Perfectly. Um, I this has been in the watch box for a little while. I've been wearing the uh, polar on the that strap that I got for yeah. it, which is still on there. It's great, but uh, today felt like a blue day. Blue shirt, blue watch, you know, blue Why jeans. Not? Why not? So um, I'm actually going to, let me give you a little kind of the magic on this piece. For those of that don't know, yeah, that movement. give me that in-house manufacturer, platinum rotor, micro rotor, I should say. Just really, really large exposure on the exhibition case back, and the movement's massive. So this thing's been a blast. Um, you know, I really, really love it, and it's not... Uh, it's not let me down yet. No. So. Nah. We, we were very fortunate. We saw two different Turbion versions we just got in. Yeah. Um, which are pretty cool. And there's so many different versions of the Fimi Sumo. It's an awesome watch. Like, really before you wore it, I thought it was, like, such a delicate watch. But, like, you've literally worn this in, like, I've seen every scenario with it. And, like, it looks just as when you bought it. Like, I, I don't know if I can. Maybe you can identify a scratch, but I can't see yeah, sure. a new one. I showed people scratches. Although, I will say that these were here before I bought the watch. But why don't we do... I don't know if we're going to be able to get close enough in on. So somebody uh, took the bracelet like on and off oh, on yeah. this piece. So right on the lug at the, it's it's very, very light, but you can kind of see a little chatter right there. So it was done before I bought the watch, but other than that, the rest of it's a hundred percent perfect. But um, I, I haven't worn it lightly at all. I mean, I wear no. it like I wear my sub and I really haven't had any problems. I mean, obviously I'm not jumping in the pool or anything like that with it, but Beyond that, you could do anything. Yeah, it's been good. Um, I will say, though, uh, I spoke to Tim earlier today because he had the uh, Turbion uh, skeleton dial on the show last night. Oh, yes, they And did. that watch, I looked at it, it's just, it's bigger. It's 42 millimeters, and it just doesn't quite, and I just love this so much. I did put it on. It did feel a little like, awkward on the yeah. wrist. You got to, like, you know, have the right wrist for it, but it's such a cool watch. And the black, uh, the black ceramic one we got into is sweet. I'm telling you guys, you got to try this on. You owe must it to try. yourselves. Don't, don't, not saying buy it. I'm saying try it on. Put a big stamp on the screen. Must try. All right. We are doing uh, this or that. Uh, we don't have a poll because apparently the poll company is uh, stupid. They don't work anymore. Things happen, you know. Um, but we're doing this or that. Uh, Sequan has <laughs> a, uh, I don't know, should we get into your, your little announcement? 
Uh, yeah, uh, we, we can to do that kind first. of explain why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so I'll be traveling for a bit, guys. I'm, I'm gonna be leaving uh, the U.S. for a little bit. Um, all Watchbox, you know, I'll still be around, but I probably won't be on uh, any shows or content for at least the next month or so. Uh, new things can't really announce exactly what's uh, happening yet, but in the next two weeks, we'll be able to announce it and a really cool things happening for Watchbox. We're gonna have a really good uh, end of the year and a great, uh, great 2020 for sure. Yeah, so part of the part of what's happening and why he's traveling and uh, some internal stuff that's happening is all of the new content that we're going to be able to produce. All of we got big stuff coming, which is the kind of the message of the show. But in good spirit of Q leaving for a little while and not being on the show anymore, we thought and he's traveling. So what better watch to do with this or that with? Although the poll would have been nice uh, <laughs> with the GMT. Right, that was the basis for the discussion, and we said budget GMT, Q picked under five grand. So, uh, I mean, you picked the category, <laughs> you picked a rather odd choice. I will let you so, defend this to the death. <clears throat> I will, I will defend this choice to the death, because it's all about adventure, right? And um, here we go. Uh, we wanted nice GMT world time to watch, and here I have the Mont Blanc uh, geos geospheres um, in bronze. Really cool piece. So what's unique about this, you actually have these two halves of the world, two different hemispheres, and I pop out the crown. It actually moves with the world, you can kind of see. It kind of goes around, and around each hemisphere is actually the 24 arcana. So you actually have a G, um, GMT on the, the spheres itself if you want to go in and read. And then you also have this 24-hour... Um, uh, indicator here as well. So you can just read that. What I like about it, it's complicated looking, but it's actually very easy to use. I love that it's in bronze. It's unique. It's not something you see every day. You can turn this into a three um, th three GMT watch as well, because with this little push on the side, you can um, adjust the 24 hour uh, indicator there independently as well. Beautiful, unique. The whole thing looms up which is really, really nice. Uh, ceramic bezel is what, as well gives you a nice little compass when you're out there, you know, on your adventures, you can get yourself out there. You're gonna come, you're gonna, you're gonna hate me because it's a Mont Blanc, but you know, we gotta, we gotta branch out a little bit, guys. We can't just be doing the same things every day. We gotta enjoy, we gotta, gotta have a little adventure in your life. So I didn't wanna pick something, the, the usual suspects, you know, I was gonna go with like a PAM 88, but I wanted something unique, you're not gonna see anything. And I think for something cool, if you're gonna have one watch, if you wanna be on an adventure, have your GMT function, I would definitely wear this watch. Not a fan of the bunch strap, but so easy to just pop that baby out. You know what I mean? And without the bunch strap, I think it's a great watch. So vote for this Mont Blanc. You know, wish me a good uh, farewell for a little bit. Um, and definitely, I will not pick uh, my this or that first anymore. Because he definitely got me with the brand. It's a cool watch. You can't say it's not a cool watch. All right, so... It, there's other versions of this watch that yeah, are better they, than this watch. So that being said, obviously we wanted to bring what we had to inside. show you visually on the show. Um, the, there's a green version of this, which I like oh, yes. better than this. This strap, honestly, would be the first thing that would come off this watch to me. Um, yeah, all together. I mean, it's got a, like a rather odd case back engraving choice for me. Um, also of the, I don't know. Of, of I just, it's okay. The dial's pretty... Uh, you know, I mean, uh, listen... I feel Minerva like that's inspired, so. Know, listen, I, I feel like it's, that it's a lot of money, kind of for what it is. If you're spending five grand on that, even though retail is probably a lot higher than that, it wouldn't be my first choice. Hey, show me another watch. We it have. It wasn't two, even your first choice. Show me another watch that you has to, two hemispheres. For you five wanted grand. to pick a Pam eighty eight. Two moving hemispheres all that right. fully loom up. All I'm saying, it wasn't even your first choice. Okay. I didn't know we had it. I, I did a further that's dig, cool. and then I was like, oh wow. I was going Such through the cool vault, watch. and I found something that I thought was super cool and iconic. And my whole thing here is that Mont Blanc, while it might be great on a trip or two, you're going to get back from that trip and say, you know what, it's not really a watch that needs to stay in my collection. This guy I can stay in your collection. This is uh, Mont Brilliant de, de Tora. Yep. And what what I get here, one, that brown dial is actually really, really cool. It's one of the best brown dials ever made. And what I get here is full calendar, buddy. I get day, date, right? But, but can you read it, though? 
Yeah, you can read it. Uh, Come on. I, I'm struggling. So you got the full Navitimer uh, sliding scale, right? So you can do uh, whatever you want to do, tip calculator, all that jazz that people say they use it for and don't. Everything. <laughs> um, full calendar, GMT, chronograph. Pretty watch, Navitimer, 43 millimeter, good size, not the big 46 millimeter. No. Bracelet, durable sport watch in steel that can stay in a collection for years. You can wear it. It could be your travel watch. I'm getting on a plane. I'm traveling with a Navitimer on a plane. I mean, could it be more at home? I'm just saying, I've seen many of these. I've never I've never seen one of these in my box. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Because like, people keep them and hold them and love them so much. Yeah. And like they see it as adventure, I, it's hard for me. This is why I, uh, you're, you're you're vicious to bring up Brightling because I love Brightling so much. So like, listen, we could have, <laughs> I could have picked a two. You know, it would have been very easy. I could have picked a Tudor Pepsi. I could have picked some other Brightling. We had tons of GMTs. There's bo 5s There's the one that competes with this with the world map on yes. it, the Galactic. Ugh. I felt that that piece with full with more complication for the same price point had more staying power. And being the trading desk, and we're always talking about value proposition versus retention, that's the sticker for me. And this guy needs a new strap, so you're putting money into a strap. This no, guy, you, the you need to drop it in some release, soda just after take the, the case tarnishes. But uh, that's how the fun. You crack an egg on it, and you do the whole the whole thing, and you turn it green, okay. you take it back. Shout out to OJ Wally. You know, exactly. It's the juice. When the bronzos were a thing, and people figured out <laughs> that you could like change the tarnish on a... It, it almost felt like every day it was science class yes. at what you want. <laughs> it was always like, well, what if I did this? It was, it was so great. many it was things. A good time. But uh, all right, so there's no poll, but uh, I know everybody that's watching likes the, the Navitimer better. No, actually, there are a lot of people in the chat um, that I'm reading off my phone Don't that says, to Don't you know, the Mont Blanc is very interesting to watch, and they think. The, and this, you know, uh, Bricane has a Mont Blanc wallet that will go real nice with the watch as well. Okay. Not many Bratton so walls. I'm glad out there. that we're. I'm glad that we're. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm just saying, on, on if you were stuck somewhere like in a desert or where have you, and you needed a true tool, I got a compass. What I'm going to do with the slide rule? I don't even I mean, know what day it is. I got to survive. Sundial, buddy. I mean, I mean who's doing every watch is a compass. All right, That's listen. like saying you're going to put the leaf and the needle and all that. You know. Yeah, because okay. we're survivors. Because we got Navi timer. All right. That's enough of this <laughs> nonsense. I, li- I like Mont the Mont Blanc. Blanc. It wouldn't be my first choice. It's a cool watch. There's other versions, like I said, of that piece that are cooler. I like the like the real crazy new like Minerva Mono Pusher stuff. Yes, that stuff's good. fire. That watch to me kind of feels like you know for three grand, it's really cool. And maybe you buy that instead of a Pelagos, but I don't know that I'd I'd put it up in the five grand range. Is all I'm saying, and uh, I would wear that. It actually fits me perfectly. Like, I put it on, I was like, hmm, yeah, it, should I buy this? It, it's a beautiful watch, but we all know the Mont Blanc is what you want, you know, if you're about to hop on a plane tomorrow. Nobody's going to use the slide rule. Nobody. If you know how to use the slide rule in the chat, please let me know. Nobody's using the... the, the but you can, it's easier to figure out could. the compass than it is to figure out, like, the slide rule mm-hmm. mid-survival situation. Last thing, and then I'm going to... the. This comes with a little card that you could put in your Mont Blanc wallet to teach you how to use the slide rule. I think the card's too big for the wallet. So All right. Like this. Anyhow, moving on. We are going to get to the meat of the show. Uh, I uh, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? We, uh, we got some really big things. It's going to be a little, I will say, it's going to be a little vague, but there's some good content here. So uh, Q&A videos. Right? Yep. You guys have seen, hopefully you know what we're talking about. You've seen the Q&A videos that we've been doing lately. Um, we all shot those on the same day yep. um, a couple weeks ago. I know I'm reading all the comments. You guys like the series. They're getting really good views. But people are saying, hey, they're the same questions. And admittedly, yes, there are some of the same questions. Um, I don't know that necessarily that was the, the idea when we first started, but it kind of what it got turned into. Uh, but we hear you, and we hope that you keep to support the uh, Q&A videos because they're going to be different exactly. moving forward. We're going to take some more liberties. We're going to have some more fun conversations. We also um, want to get more people in our headquarters involved yep. that aren't necessarily YouTube personalities. I think that would be cool for you guys so you can see more faces. And you know, pretty much anybody that wants to do a video will let do a video. Exactly, in, just jump on. In our headquarters. And I think that would be pretty cool. You can see some more 
uh, personality, some kind of more uh, observations and whatnot. So we hear you loud and clear. The Q&A videos, I think, are a big success. We got tons of other kind of little ideas like that that we're going to fish out. But I think that for the first attempt, it went pretty well. I, I think so. I think um, I think the reason why we ended up splitting the way we wanted it is to make sure there was a nice amount of content out there. But I think we're definitely switch it up a little bit, but please go to those videos and like comment questions that you want us to answer up there. Um, Cause that will give us that. That's what we'll use. So have fun, ask real questions. Don't make it too crazy. But I think like the Snoopy question was a great one. Cause everybody kind of had their own unique answer to it. Yeah. So have some fun, go check out those Q and a videos and just like put as much questions as you feel like up there. And um, just give us more things to talk about when we do the next round. I think it'd be real fun. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be like, each individual person anymore, or if it's gonna be like one question and four answers, we're gonna figure it out. But the idea is like, we proofed it out, we know what we need to fix more or less, and the next time will be a little bit different. Um, but we like the series and we think you guys do too. So positive feedback and appreciate that. Segway, speaking of positive feedback, uh, Mr. Thanos came back last week. Oh yes, the return of the Thanos. We had a, uh, a relatively record video. Um, last yeah, week's video one. of the trading desk, uh, I think currently is at over 23,000 views. So kind of crazy. Um, yeah, it was real good. We have some videos, you know, the, we need to do another deskies. Uh, I know Josh is watching, but we did a deskies <laughs> last year, uh, which was like our annual show. And I think that one hit like 30 or 35. So kind of crazy to see him doing 23 over a week. Um, but awesome response, and I can't thank you guys enough. Tons of uh, Instagram love as well, um, which we always put our Instagram up there, and we'll do that at the end of the show. But uh, the videos are getting traction, which is awesome. Yeah. And we're trying to you know, listen. At the same time, we want to hear all the feedback because we want to know. Um, I can't tell you how hard it is sometimes on a, on a Thursday morning when I'm thinking, what should we talk about? You know, we always talk For about sure. I don't want to come up here and give you the same content. And uh, I was talking, I told you I was talking to Tim Masso earlier. And same thing, Tim is getting ready. Like, you think Tim is good? Yeah, he's Tim is to. getting ready to <laughs> drop a microphone. Um, there's so much cool content coming out from yep. Tim in the future. He's working on some projects. And I can't really tell you, you know, too much. And again, it's going to be a little vague, but it's it's going to be worth sticking around for. I mean, he's getting ready to ramp up to something serious. So um, I'm super excited for that. Love Tim's content. Um, try and watch as much of it as possible. Even though I, uh, there's not the one with Brian on it. Cause yeah, that, that one's always, you know, interesting, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know that's more of a drinking it. game show than anything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> but cool things but coming anyhow, from Tim. Yeah, so super, super fun stuff. Uh, we also have... Uh, project which sadly I don't yeah, know if you're gonna be a part of. First. Oh man, I probably will miss the first little. We'll but why don't you give that. us a little bit of a? I'll so, let you talk. So, for so a it's gonna bit. be more of like a like an after hours show where mm -hmm. like you know the traders after like a day where I think it's be like more like a round table discussion where like we're in this in the the main HQ having fun, a little drinks out, and just that. Uh, Honestly, answering random questions and just going on topics. You've seen uh, Mike Mandels, you've seen Elena, you've seen um, George Mayer. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of guys you've seen before, some traders you haven't. And just kind of a nice free-flowing conversation about, you know, random topics in the watch industry from, honestly, some of the best knowledge. As you know, you listen to managers, you listen to Mayer. Um, it's going to be fun to have a bunch of different... Um, people on there and it's just to be a little bit more loose a little bit more just kind of free flowing and like it won't be too structured if you just kind of start on a topic and just kind of have some fun so i think that'd be a really good show and um when, when that gets i probably will miss the first one or two episodes but i'll definitely be a, a regular cast member when that comes out and that'll be like to me a very nice fun fun little little bit more loose uh type of show and, and really shooting at the hq you never know what type of watch or who might just pop in. Danny Goldberg might pop in for two minutes. You never know. Super. So yeah, around. I think it it's super interesting concept. And when they when we kind of flushed it out and we were talking about it, everybody was on board. So I think the theme to take away is going to be what we want to do is amp up our content, make it better. Not not necessarily uh, quantity, but quality. Exactly. And my understanding what this is going to be is like a watches after hours slash like big brother overview conversation where you know it's not sitting in front of a camera it's not worrying about what we're going to talk about it's a little less you know it's more impromptu kind of like the q a videos exactly except without the the cued questions and it's just going to be shooting shop talking watches 
Um, and what that allows us to do, since it'll be in another, you know, be in our corporate headquarter building, is bring people that you've never seen in before. Exactly. Like, as much as it's exciting to see, you know, Mayor Time and uh, George Mayor and Manjos and, um, you know, even maybe some of the people you guys know, like David Butler I've brought on the show. Yeah. Um, you'll also see some people that are in operations, some people that are in sales support, and it, I think it'll be cool. Yeah, I think so. Be a good Try time. to get uh, one of the watchmakers up there too, Justin. I think I might get him on. He's pretty, he's, he's pretty good. I, I think it'd be cool. I think, like, so much good content on the way, to be honest. But it's really up to you guys to, like, send us questions. Tell us exactly what you want to hear about. Uh, no question is a dumb question. And, like, there. thank you guys so much for always giving us good feedback and just keep it coming, you know. Hit us up. Uh, in the comments, shoot us an email, hit us on my Instagram. We're always looking to reach out and create something more special, you know, for you. You know, the more, uh, you know, we're, we're getting so much viewers now and subscribers, the more come, the more we can do and the more unique things we can make happen in the future. Yeah, and, and the actual show will just be kind of a jumping off point to allowing you guys to see more who we are, not, not only just in one building, but maybe we can build something out on a global scale, show exactly. you different offices. You can meet, you know, around the world, and then it's just all about, you know, spreading the what we love, spreading what we do on a daily basis, giving you some insight, and uh, I think it'll be super successful and super cool. Exactly, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really cool. I think. Hopefully, it's a good way for us to get. Uh, I think we're at ninety three thousand subscribers right now. Ninety four, maybe. Haven't checked. Let's, in a let, second. let's get to a hundred. Let's get us that plaque. You know, we've been uh, working at it for a while. I think you guys can do it. Yeah, then we get the, the plaque. You know, I'll we, steal it. Do we get a plaque for real? I think yeah. I think once you get 100k, you get not maybe the gold. I, I don't know the exact details, but right. you guys can get us there. I believe I believe in you. Watch fam. Subscribe. Tell I like your friends. That. <laughs> I have um, one other thing that I want to mention that Q doesn't even know. No, I don't. But uh, I'm surprised already. World debut. Uh, some big news. Watchbox. Is going to be extending their warranty on pre-owned watches to two years. Very nice. Yeah. So hey, uh, pop the champagne on that. Currently, fifteen months, and um, we're going to go ahead and uh, so we've we want to be at the forefront of pushing the envelope for everything, right? Buy, sell, trade, service, international. You know, we do everything. Fifteen months is super competitive. Two years, like. Two years is great on yeah, a pre-owned watch. It is almost so a we currently standard. have the ability for you to opt for a paid warranty, which is three years for yep. physical and internal. And we do 15 months, which covers which only internal. A great program. Two years now on full internal manufacturer's defects scenarios. Um, and then you still can opt for the three year for physical as well. But without anything, you're going to get the two years uh, from now on for free. I think so, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that, that's like amazing. You know, 15 months is good. Two years is awesome. Again, like most pieces that we have, already run through some type of service anywhere. So this is just a little bit more of a peace of mind situation. But I think a full two-year warranty on the pieces that we have, that's just such a great value because nobody likes, you know, something going around that last month and then not being able to do something. So two two nice years, 24 months of just uh, worry-free enjoyment of time pieces. I like that. Good yeah, job, so Watchbox. just it's just you know trying to figure out where we can make the uh, be more competitive and maybe it, maybe it doesn't necessarily affect you know the bottom line, but we have these services already. We have this content that we're producing that could be you know let's do this, let's make better content. We have this warranty that's good, but it could be better. Um, you know, we have these offices. We could have more. You know, exactly. So we're trying. We're trying to you know we're there's no roadmap when you're in front right no. so we're just trying to push forward maybe. yeah uh so yeah speaking of pioneering q is gonna go uh clear some land yeah <laughs> for for another uh probably 30 days 60 days something like that yeah that, that, that's gonna be interesting i'm telling you i'm hoping to get some content uh from where i'll be as well but uh, i'm really excited for that just you know uh, new, new new space for us entering a, a new market and like Again, what I love about what we're doing with these um, our international offices is the, the inventory that we're able to get, uh, especially when you're talking to independent brands. It, it's amazing. You know, we have offices in Switzerland, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Africa, uh, many more uh, coming online. And this is just giving us more places 
to meet new clients, more places to get very unique watches for a long time, uh, especially like, you know, when we were in Florida, um, a lot of the issue was a lot of these unique pieces a lot of our clients wanted were be like you know, somewhere out of the country and we didn't really have the right sources to not only get it, but to get it, inspect it, make sure it's up to watch box quality and get it for our clients. So that's one of the most exciting things about opening up um, new offices and new areas and new markets, just seeing the watches that were just there and nobody taught to move them and uh, always unique pieces, you know, especially with um, our Switzerland and Hong Kong offices, the pieces we get out of there are just so unique. And it's just because we're able to be there, have people come and meet our great team, Zoe and Josh and all the guys over there. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So we are uh, also uh, taking questions in the chat. Yes, so if please. you guys are on the chat box and have questions, please fire them off. If you are watching this after it's live and you have questions for me, um, I, I do look at the comments. I read the comments. So please put them in the comment box and uh, do my best to get to you. Um, um, quick shout out to uh, so many, you know, Eddie Landsberg. Um, actually, so who's this guy? Uh, Locutus de Borg. I'd like to work in the Cape Town office. Feel free to send an inquiry. You'd be amazed um, if you send in an inquiry, you know, and you're looking to be in the watch industry and, you know, in a place where we're opening something up or have opportunity, we will reach out and we will, you know, Justin Ricks, um, who did a show with me um, uh, maybe six months ago, is a great example of somebody who just loved what we did, loved uh, watches and just wanted to get in the industry and literally watch the show, send in a message, and he now works for us. And I think there, there are a couple There's people a who started... That, yeah just from loving the show and like we're very um we're very open we're always looking at people who love watches and who you know willing to get out there grind and most of all are willing to connect with people and make relationships so if you're ever like you know feeling you want to jump in not to guarantee that there is an opening but never feel free to uh shoot a message we got a spot Nobody's sitting at your desk. Um, next? No, my desk is off limits. I, you know, if you right. feel free, if you want to wrestle me when I get back, but that's not, it's not a fight. Don't, it's not a fight to you. Win. That might not have come across the way you thought. You know what I mean. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, questions from the chat, and listen, you guys, faithful chat commenters, this is going crazy. You guys are always in here. Uh, I wish I could give you all shout outs, but you guys know who you are. You're always in the chat box. Um, Mark Esk is asking, fair question. Where is Mike Michaels? We've talked about uh, Mike before. Mike has left Watchbox um, in a very, very good way, amicable yeah. way. He uh, took a position with another company, uh, basically heading up a really big team of watchmakers. Uh, I just spoke to him like a week and a half ago. Um, he went on an international trip before yeah, he, he went to take that job, and he had a fantastic time. So in good health, living a dream. You know, yeah. don't worry about Mike Michaels. Uh, oh, it's good. Still one of my very good friends, somebody who got me into the industry, and still a great friend of Watchbox, you know. Same things, Instagram, so you could still reach him on there. It, exactly. Reach out, and but, reach out. He loves uh, interacting with fans as well. Yeah, good guy. Uh, Darth Blad Verified, Vaderfied, is saying CQ's shirt is fly. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I try to keep uh, it fly out there, you know, for the one or two ladies that are watching, you know. Or to inspire you guys to just keep keep on keeping on out there. Clive Watch Wrangler saying, Jason and CQ, can I join the stream? I've got the BMI, body mass index, I assume. Yeah. Uh, all right, dude, we're big boys. I mean, calm down a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, all right? Uh, we're getting there. Clive was funny. High and rising, shout out, you know, faithful. You know, you got to thank you guys for always tuning in. I remember, um, man, maybe almost three years ago when I was in Alaska <laughs> and I was just there in the chat every day and all these guys are still here. so awesome. John Doe is being very adamant. Uh, I already answered the question, but it says, I will not be ignored. Answer my question with 27 exclamation marks about Mike Michaels. So there you go. Congratulations. Uh, Brigade 101. Uh, don't know if you want me to say your name on live. I know who this is. Awesome guy. Uh, says that he might have a deal we talked about earlier. Uh, so some of the some of the times when you do what we do, it's not about trying to close the deal. It's telling someone, hey, listen, I would take that deal. Yes. Or don't buy this watch because it's – and I, we've talked about that before. This was a scenario where he asked me, uh, you know, what should he do? He really likes the other watch. So I told him how he should, you know, try and approach the other dealer. And uh, he says he might have a deal, so good for you. It's a – I will say it's a uh, show part LUC – uh, time only, I believe, with the silver dial. So super cool. Oh, that's a nice piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're so we're shout out to you. We're um, I forget the word, but we're we're there for you. You know, what I mean, I have so many clients who 
you know, maybe you buy a couple watches from me, just buy one watch, regardless of price point. If you text me, if you message me, you ask me about opinion on another watch, you get an honest answer. Even whether I have it or not, you know, price-wise, it's price-wise. No matter what, I want we want the experience of our clients to be great. The watch world is so huge, and sometimes you're looking at a piece I just don't have and I can't have. So no matter what, I just want you to be educated and have a good experience. Just make sure you're not, you know, buying any lemons, stepping on any grenades out there. But any any good watch guy, any good um, watch advisor will always have your back. And it's not necessarily, you know, it's all about relationships. It's not necessarily you got to buy every watch from me. We're just here to make sure, you, you know, we can guide you in every, every way we can, you know. Yeah, for sure. Your watch sherpa, you know, bringing that name back. Um, oh, there's a good question here on a stainless steel Daytona. Go for it. Uh, I think it's, was it David B? Oh, uh, Grill Watch, he's, he has offered to get a, a stainless steel Daytona at retail, but he won't be able to get, uh, his Grill Watch which is the yellow gold on the Oyster Flex. Such a tough situation, you know, right now. I think we're in a world where Rolex is coming back to earth a little bit. Um, it, it, that's a really tough choice because... Stainless steel Daytona, especially with the white dial, I love it. Value-wise, you can't go wrong. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, if you buy this, you're not looking to, to, you know, flip it or move it or trade it to get the yellow gold piece. So it, it's a thing where if you're okay with waiting, if you know no matter what, the yellow gold is what you want, and this will go for any watch. If you know there's a certain version of a watch that you love, that you really, really love, don't go for the other version if you know you're not going to be content with that version. You know, if you know you're always going to be looking at your watch, oh, I wish I had this version. Just like this um, beautiful Mont Blanc here. You know, there's a different versions, but if you know the loser that the, the bronze is your love, go for the bronze. Don't chase something else because you always look at that watch and be like, oh, I can't wait. And don't put yourself, if you're in a situation with a dealer where you, you're going to buy that Daytona and, you know, maybe if you move it or you flip it or you trade it, that's going to interrupt your relationship with your dealer, don't go down that path because it's not worth burning that bridge because 10 years from now, when there's something else cool that you want to get, you won't be able to walk over that bridge. And that, you know, that's a very tough choice. You know, either watch is a great watch. I don't know what, I don't know what to do there. I, I get the watch you really like. Don't worry about secondary. Unless you're, and if, if your main concern is like, should I get the steel piece because it's going to be worth more later? You got to realize like that's right now. Later, that might not be the case. Like, why wouldn't you buy the less, I guess, the easier to get piece that you really, really love and not have to worry about, you know, having to. Or get two. Who knows? Sometimes you need two. But, no, uh, two. All right. Two so less. trying to scan through some of these questions here. Uh, next Grail watch? Oof. Um, the Glashute CQ is going to be my next watch period. Uh, most likely. Um, I think I have a feature uh, on it coming out as well. Really cool watch. Um, they're using the same movement that's in the Center of Excellence. I think it's a Caliber 36. Beautiful movement. Beautiful watch. It's a diver. There is heritage roots. And what I love about it, good shooters make, like this season, there's, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to start. This season, there's been so many sports watches or dive watches that are looking like, you know, a Nautilus, right? Let's just be out there. And I love the Glashute made a dive watch. It looks like other dive watches because, like, you know, every dive watch can have a, um, a rotating bezel, but it's still unique to them. There's a lot of Glashute identity and DNA in that watch, and I love that. I love that they didn't fall into... I'm not gonna I'm not going to mention those brands, but you guys know the brands that are fell into the Nautilus trap, and it's like, why do that? Why become... BRO5. Why become a laughing stock? Let's go with the BRO5. Why? Why, Bellin Ross? I really don't understand why you make that watch. Yes, it might look like a nice watch, and but it's like, why? Why not make something that the Bellin Ross fans want? You know what I mean? Why not make what the people want? Why give the people... You could have gave me a Space 4. Uh, uh, a you new know, space. I, I'd rather that versus the... A new Hydromax. I, I, I'd rather that versus the BRO5. I just don't I was, think... So I was... I don't, uh, well, don't want to end this on a negative note, but I was waiting to see the BRO5 in person before I judged it harshly. I, I was ready with, like, a swift, like, waiting for it. And I saw one the other day I put it on my wrist, and it just... Don't get it. It, I don't know. Because there's, there's no creativity behind it. It's like you go I in the design Bellin room. Ross. I do. And, and that's the thing is like, I think a lot Fun of brands watch. like forget what, what, what their course for. Like um, James G. Arthur is asking, asking about a Bramont. He saw me wearing a Bramont in a video. I love Bramont. One of the main reasons that I love Bramont, they run their lane. 
They make a hardened case. They make aviation limited editions, a few uh, diver limited editions. They use some type of historical attachment, uh, you know, piece of the right flyer, the, the code breaker that, that actually with the code printed, the serial number printed off of the code breaker. They actually make an attempt to say, hey, this is a real connection to a history. You know, we're not the oldest brand out there. We're a newer brand, but we're trying our best to make things for our collector base. They do the military editions that are really nice. The squadron pieces are cool, and they're running their lane. They don't make anything where it's like, oh, that that's not a Vermont, you know? So, I, I don't know. I just get, you know, it just irks me when a brand like Bell & Ross, which has a great collector base of so people who buy them. Not everybody buys a Bell & Ross. It's not your taste. But you got to play to the people who love you. Or else you run into that Brightland situation when, hey, I want to make over. I want to make everything new. And then, like, you lose a good core of people who love that Navi timer. You know, I will just... S- yeah. So, apparent one thing, too. Burns Hughes Burns. certainly been to some kind I'll of say. Vermont training or event because he's drunk the coolest. <laughs> two, I like Vermont. They're, they're good watch. Good, cheap watch, inexpensive. Uh, the stuff with, like, the right flyers in it, questionable. Very expensive for what it is. But Price side point, note, yes, yes. that aside, at least they're doing something. I get your point. Um, I don't want to put it all on on Bill and Ross. That was not the intent of the end of the show. But um, I will say that ninety percent of what they do, I really like. That piece kind of missed the mark for me. But you know, there's other brands. All everybody's guilty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, of making watches that that are a flyer that you're kind of like, you know, the eleven fifty nine. Uh, you know. Uh, I recently saw that Hamilton uh, destroyed their most their successful model in history, the uh, X Wind, uh, with an automatic time only ver- or oh, like a, yeah, yeah. a time only version non chronograph. I looked at that and I said, oh, "All right, well, I don't know what they're doing." There's tons of watch brands that do little things like this. It doesn't mean that they're bad brands. It just means that you know somebody who was in charge of designing something probably shouldn't have been. But um, all right. I didn't want that to get too ranty. Uh, I'm sorry. I just... Is uh, I'm not saying you were. I'm just saying uh, look, I'm pulling back. Hey, call me Bell and Ross, bit. man. I can I can help you out. Call CQ. We we'll take care of this. You know. Yeah. I got you. He's busy. He's traveling for a little while. But anyhow, uh, Mark S. All right. One last question. I just I haven't read the whole thing, but it's tagged by me. This is what the show should be. Hot takes on watches. First twenty minutes were KG speculation. No specific total waste of time. Okay. Sorry you feel that way. Hope you enjoy the free content, Mark S. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I, I'm i assuming you meant uh, there wasn't really any speculation the first 20 minutes we were talking about this or that. And, uh, so I assume other shows maybe. Uh, all kidding aside, I mean, I appreciate the feedback. I do like riffing like this. Uh, sometimes it can come across a little negative. So we try not to do that too much. Um, but... If rants is what you want, then rants is what you get. Yeah, hey, I, I will do just rants. Nah, just like don't, 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 don't put me up. You know, and we do have to do shows like this sometimes. Just talk, talk to the people and let you guys know what's going on in the Watchbox world, and uh, allow you guys a little bit of in, input as well. You know, it, it it's part of it. With, with us doing so many videos, you want to make sure that we're we're doing things that people want and give you that that platform. You know, for me to rant a little bit on Bone Ross. All right, I'm gonna call a show. That's uh. Wait, can minutes? we just have a bunch of MBs in the chat right now? Give CQ a win. I won't be here for a month. I need this W to see me off right. We all know Navi Time is a great watch, but if you're out on an adventure... So you admit you know, my watch is great. I, it, listen, I'm a Brightland fan, so I, I, I will never be... You know, Brightland has done a lot for me, so I will never Why talk to them. Why don't you your anti-Brightland, anti-Bell and Ross attitude out of my listen. show, okay? Listen. Things I, happen, man. I love Things this happen. guy. All right. Thank you guys for logging in. Thank you for participating. Let us know what you think for future content. Hope you like the Q&A. Two-year warranty from now on. Yes. Uh, big news. We got some great content coming. Get us to 100,000. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Evo underscore watches on Instagram. CQ underscore the watch guy. Follow me, message me. You know, give me a, keep me company while I'm away, man. Just shoot me a DM and I'll, I'll DM right back. And if you're not following Tim's Instagram, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're That's all I'm going to say. Insane. In- All right. Insanity. And unsubscribe from Brian. All right. Take it easy, guys. Thank you. <laughs>